Welcome back guys to another episode of Code and Soul. My name is Ayan and today we are talking about managing dependencies in your project. So let's get started. So let's talk about dependencies and what they are. Suppose you are building an open source project and it depends on some another open source project which in turn depends on some another open source project which are generally seen in the case of libraries which you are using in your project and they have been maintained by different developers different maintainers upstream generally in a git based server because everyone these days are using git based server to version control their project either they are hosted on github or gitlab or bitbucket and whatsoever so you need to make sure that all those dependencies are in sync with the main project so whenever someone make changes to this library you have their latest updated code you don't have any bugs in your software you want it to stay updated all the time and that is why managing dependencies become a pay in the pay in the so today we are going to talk about how we can use two different methods one is git sub module and another is using android or google's open source tool known as repo to manage these dependencies so let's get started i'll switch over to the computer screen and show you how we can use this git sub module and repo tool so basically let's take this into consideration suppose you are having a project which depends on other projects uh, let's call it you are having an open source project and you are the maintainer of this project and your project depends on two libraries which are maintained uh, as individual project by these two maintainers and you want to manage these dependencies into your project so how you can do that so basically uh, i'll show you two ways to manage dependencies uh, one is using git sub modules and another is using uh, google's repo tool we'll talk about that in a bit uh, before going ahead uh, it's a it's a best uh, the best way to manage dependencies which are project in themselves is fork them so you need to fork them into your account and use that local fork instead of this so uh why is that so let's say uh, this maintainer uh, updated the library and uh changed some apis which in result broke down your project so you don't want that so uh let's start with git sub modules so i created a small repository for this demo uh, we'll clone it into our local system uh, by executing the command uh, first let's do it in the desktop get clone name so this will clone the repository uh now you can see i have a source directory i have a lib directory and i like to keep all the dependencies libraries into the lib directory as you can see in the lib i have two dependencies two sub modules the fast led and pop sub client as of now i'll show you how to add another sub modules uh so let's say we have scaled this project and we added uh, some new features which depends on another library uh, let's say this library os xtts and we want to use it as a sub module so how will we do that so first of all uh change to that directory where you want your sub module code to be cloned after you fetched it i want it in my lib so i'll execute the following command to add new sub module get sub module add and the url of the sub module of the project so now you can see i have the new sub module and it has the code uh you can also see that the other two are having no code at the moment because it has just been initial initialized by the git but not yet updated so how do we update that we can update by running git sub module in it and git sub module update so this will bring the latest code the latest commit from the master branch so these are some big projects which will take some time to clone I don't know why I have chosen this library for the demo these are really big so stray but never mind we'll wait for a couple of seconds and it should be done Okay so now it has been cloned and now you can see their code 
so now all the dependencies are there uh, so you will notice in the root directory of your project git will create a hidden file by the name git modules and what this file does it tracks all the metadata so this track the metadata of this uh, sub module like where it is coming from where we have to store it so whenever someone cloned it along with sub module they will get these so benefit of adding sub module is you can ship your code with dependencies whosoever cloned it can get sub module independently and uh, that is the git sub module for you now let's talk about the repo tool really wonderful tool to track all the projects which you can use in one of your project uh, the best thing about the repo tool is it uh, it has so many features it allows you it enables you so many things like which commit to fetch which branch to fetch and you can have different configuration for same project so basically if you want to fetch some additional packages for testing so suppose you are working in a corporate and they have different testing team and developer team and developer team wants one set of dependencies while testing team has some other dependencies to test the project you can do that with repo tool this enables so many things the android open source project development team uh, development community uses this repo tool so unlike the sub module uh, git repo sorry and uh, the google repo tool needs is a script which needs to be installed on your system so to install the repo tool uh, i had mentioned the steps in my blog i will link it down below so you can see basically it just needs to uh, fetch from this url and make it executable then you can use it some st same step for uh, easy step for mac users so uh, the sub module has dot sub module file which get created automatically to track the metadata uh, unlike that the repo tool needs you to create a file where you put all the metadata which helps repo tool to identify from where to fetch the project from where to get the project and where to store it and so on uh, that are called the manifest so manifest are basically .xml files where you will mention what are the different dependencies of your project where you want to fetch it from uh, that is the remote where you have to fetch it from where you have to store it and which commit you want to fetch it from uh, which branch you want to fetch it from and so on so I have already installed a repo tool on my uh, machine so I have created a small repository uh, manifest demo to show show it to you so basically repo tools needs you to have one more git repo where you stall uh, where you uh, store your manifest so by default repo tool looks for default.xml file so I'll show you the default.xml file which I have created in a git repository so basically I will use this git repository to fetch this manifest file and repo tool will use this metadata to fetch all the dependencies uh, I know it sounds a bit confusing but if you have any confusion just comment down below and I'll I'll try to solve it or you can go read my blog there is a more detailed description so I'll I'll use this manifest demo default.xml file to tell repo what are my dependencies so I'll, I'm using same dependencies fast LED and pop sub client but in repo default.xml manifest format the powerful feature of repo is by default it looks for default.xml but you can uh, make it uh, look for different xml manifest file for example you are having a testing team and they have different dependencies some additional dependencies then you can have testing.xml suppose you are having a quality assurance team you can have qa.xml and so on so uh, for the same project you can have different xml manifest files and it will resolve the dependencies automatically so uh, what we'll do now we'll uh, clone this so okay so basically we have to create a project so let's call our project 
uh, project good name I know and in this project I want all my dependencies to be fetched so how we will do it so there is a tool a repo tool and a repo init command will tell it where to fetch the manifest from and then read the manifest and get all the files so uh, I'll init the project so basically you need to provide it a manifest file sorry I didn't do that so I'll provide <coughs> it the manifest file yeah. dog in the background barking excuse this for a hat is a naughty one so I'll execute this command repo init hyphen u and the URL where the manifest file is stored and this dot tells that I need this directory my present working directory to be the root folder of my project so once I execute this command it will fetch that default.xml file so it will create a hidden repo directory inside which where there is all, all the metadata so now what we have to do to fetch the dependencies we have to run a command repo sync so what it will do it will sync all the dependencies and fetch to their commit messages fetch to their commit mentioned in default.xml so in the manifest file default.xml you need to mention your remote in this case it is my github account i have named this easy exit which you can name it anything this is your project and then we need, uh, need to mention the repositories which you need to fetch as dependencies so in my case it is fastled.git and pubsubclient.git then you need to mention the path where you want it to be cloned I want them inside the lib directory then you need to mention the commit from which commit you need to fetch it from so I just mentioned the latest commits you can uh, use older commits or whatever so now we will execute the repo sync command and what it will do it will fetch all the dependencies and place them in the lib directory as mentioned in the manifest file So this is now fetching all the dependencies and it will place them in the lib directory. So we will wait for it to clone. So this is a bare minimum uh, manifest file. It has lot many feature. You can see different features. I have mentioned a link on my blog. You can go there and take a reference. So coming back. All right, so it has been fetched. As you can see, we have the lib directory inside which we have the fast LED and pop sub client. All right, so that was so much fun managing dependencies. Hope you learned something new. If you did, subscribe to the channel because I'll be posting more such videos in the future. If you have any query, comment it down below and I'll try to solve it. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.